Welcome to church, everyone. This is the second Sunday of the year. I think that deserves a round of applause. It is lovely to be here in service. For those of us online, welcome to church as well. I will be facilitating opening prayer. Please join me in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we submit this service into your hands, and we ask that, Lord, you would dwell amongst every one of us. We ask that, Lord, you would be in this place and with those of us online. And we ask that, Father, Lord, God, through the word and through the worship, Lord, you will be there with us. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, that we're able to gather. We do not take it for granted that we have the opportunity to gather in such places. And Father, Lord, we want to say thank you for that. We ask that this word will be a word that will be nourishing to us and this service will be a blessed service. We thank you, Lord, that we've been able to see now the second Sunday of 2023. And we ask that, Lord, we'll be able to celebrate and fellowship for many more Sundays. We commit this service into your hands. For in Jesus' mighty name I've prayed. Amen. I will now hand over to the choir. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. It's a day that the Lord has made and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Can I just welcome you to just rise up on your feet? Hallelujah. I know the seat is becoming warm, but we need to give praise and honor to whom is due. Hallelujah. As the psalmist says, that I will enter his courts with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I know we're here for a reason because church is a clinic. Hallelujah. And even as we've come this morning, we're not coming to ask God, but we're coming to give God the praise and the thanks that he deserves. Hallelujah. He deserves all the honor. He deserves all the worship. He deserves all the adoration. If that's you this morning, just lift up your hands and just glorify him. Worship him in your own words, in your own language. And tell him he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. He's worthy of all my honor, all my worship, all the glory belongs to you, King of glory. Because you are the omniscient God, the only living God, the God that's worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. If that's you this morning, just say, Lord, I've come to give you praise. I've come to give you thanks. And all honor belongs to you, Father. Hallelujah. Lord, I have come to give you praise. Lord, I have come to give you thanks. Lord, I have come to give you honor, great and mighty God. You have done it again. Lord, I have come to give you praise. Lord, I've come to give you thanks. Lord, I have come to give you honor, great and mighty God. You have done it again. Somebody give God the praise and thank Him for everything that is done because He'll continue to do it again over and over again. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I have come, say, I have come to give you, to give you praise. Lord, I've come, yeah. come to give you. Somebody lift your voice and tell God, you have, you have done it again. Hallelujah. 
since you have done it again. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We honor you. Bread of life sent down from glory. Said many things you were on earth. A holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word, say. Sent down from glory. Said many things, many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. Say bread of heaven, sent down from glory, said many things, a holy king, a carpenter. Gentle Redeemer, your God with us, God with us, the living truth. You, you are an awesome ruler, gentle.
yeah, but this is what we choose to call you. Yes, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. says who shall rise up to the hills to where the Lord is it is he that has clean hands and a pure heart so father here we are as your children this morning to give you all the worship we give you all the glory we give you all the honor because you are the only living God and we bless your name father somebody lift your voice and say we give you all we give you all we give you all
Yes. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the glory, Lord. Take all of our glory, Heavenly Father. We lift it to you, Heavenly Father. None of this is without none of this is without you, Lord. It's all by your grace, by your mercy, Heavenly Father. Please take all the glory, every single bit of it, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise, all the adoration. In your mighty name we pray. Morning, church. How's everyone feeling this morning? It's uh, the second Sunday of the year now. This is usually that point where people's New Year's resolutions start to, start to fall away, start to fade away. But aren't you grateful that we serve a God who's the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forevermore? Let's make some noise for that, Lord. Thank you. So I'll just be uh, on here to do our prayer for the nation. For those that re worship with us regularly, you'll know that this is something we're quite passionate about at Jesus House. We're committed to praying for this nation, praying for a revival in this nation. And so today specifically, I wanted to focus on the fact that in you know times of uncertainty and, and scarcity, people tend to turn inwards Tend to become tend to become more isolated and more insular, focus on just you know keeping things ticking on and that sense of community, the sense of looking out for people, sort of gets left to, left by the wayside. And so, in that, people can start to feel isolated, start to feel very lonely. You know, one of the great things of this era is the technology that allows us to you know work remotely. But uh, a side effect of that is you know people can spend large amounts of time by themselves and and almost feel forgotten. So I just wanted to start by praying against that loneliness and that isolation. I wanted to pray for the spirit to reveal, pe reveal itself to people in those times of loneliness and when they feel unsupported. Uh, as the prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah 41 verse 10 in the ESV, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you I will uphold you with my righteous hand. And so Holy Spirit, I pray for all those who feel isolated at a time like this, who feel lonely at a time like this, Heavenly Father, that they will not fear because they will realize that you are with them, Heavenly Father. They will realize that you are there to help them, Heavenly Father, that you are there to uphold them, Heavenly Father. Reveal yourself to the people in these times, Heavenly Father. Be a comforting blanket around them in these times of isolation, Heavenly Father. Make them know that they are not alone, Heavenly Father. Support them and uplift them in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we know that in those times of isolation, those times of loneliness, when people lack encouragement, the enemy can see it as an opportunity to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And as the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12, two are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm, but how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is, easy, is not easily broken. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are feeling as though that they're sleeping alone right now, Heavenly Father, and they're feeling the cold. Lord, I pray that you put people around them who will be their triple braided cord, who will strengthen them, who will keep them, who will stand back to back with them, Heavenly Father, so that they cannot be attacked and defeated in these times. Father, Lord, we thank you because we as your chosen people know that we were put here for a purpose. Lord, we thank you because you have chosen us to be the, that, that, that triple braided cord to the people of this nation, Heavenly Father. We thank you because as a nation, we know we must stand against the tide and any inclination to turn inwards and to just do what we can to keep things pushing. So Heavenly Father, we pray for your grace to carry our own burden such that we have th that sufficient grace to reach out and help others. As the Bible says in 1 Peter 4, 8, at eight and nine, most, of, most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Cheerfully share your home with those who need a meal and a place to stay. And so Heavenly Father, we pray for your provision. We pray that we will have more than enough 
to open our home to those who need a place to stay and to feed those who need something to eat, Heavenly Father. We pray that we will be an example in this generation. We'll be an example and pillars within our community that people know that they'll be able to lean on us in these times because you have provided for us, Heavenly Father. And may it all be to your glory. May they see exactly who you are through us. Father, Lord, we pray that in those moments you give us the guidance and the utterance to truly share our faith with these people as well, Heavenly Father. May they begin to see you through us. And as the Bible says in Philemon 1.6, and I pray the sharing of your faith becomes effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ, Heavenly Father. Lord, may we continue to use these opportunities to share our faith to your glory. And finally, Lord, we know that these times can only change through your hand, Heavenly Father. So we pray for an outpouring of your spirit across this whole nation, Heavenly Father. May we see a return of community. May we see a return of faith, Heavenly Father. May we see a rising up of the kingdom throughout this nation, Heavenly Father. As your word says in Psalm 85, 6, won't you revive us again so your people can rejoice in you? Heavenly Father, we pray for that revival, Heavenly Father. We look forward to the time that this nation rejoices in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church, and have a blessed Sunday. When one member of the body is hurting, it affects the entire body. We are here now to stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted who have been tortured, who have been killed, who have been raped, who have been abused just because they call themselves Christians, because they identify with the body of Christ. We want to stand in the gap for them this morning as we do, as we do habitually in this church. We pray for the persecuted church all over the world because they are our brothers and our sisters. We are of one body, so let us pray. I'm going to um, base our uh, prayers today on Romans 8, 35 to 39. And I'm going to read it very quickly. Um, who could ever, a uh, TPT version, who could ever divorce us from the endless love of God's anointed one? Absolutely no one. For nothing in the universe has the power to diminish his love towards us. Troubles, pressures, and problems are unable to come between us and heaven's love. What about persecutions, deprivations, dangers, and death threats? No, for they are all important to hinder omnipotent love. Even though it is written, all day long we face death threats for your sake, God. We are considered to be nothing more than sheep to be slaughtered. Yet, even in the midst of all these things, we triumph over all them all for God has made us to be more than conquerors and his demonstrated love is a glorious victory over everything so now I live with the confidence that there's nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death life's troubles falling angels or dark rulers in the heavens there is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There is no power above us or beneath us, no power that could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which is lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One. I want to use this scripture to pray for our brothers and sisters. I want every, every, everywhere it says I, it's, we're talking about them. I want us to pray to focus on all the things we said in this in this uh, that this scripture has um said so let us pray father lord we just thank you we give you praise oh god for your love that your love for us is so deep so all encompassing father lord particularly we lift up our brothers and sisters all over the world oh god Father, Lord, we remember those in Afghanistan who are in hiding at this point in time, trying, you know, desperately to keep their faith, 
to keep their worship of you, O oh God, in the midst of persecution, knowing that it is under the threat of death. Father Almighty God, we thank you that your love reaches into that place right now, O oh God, and it holds them, and it keeps them, and it strengthens them. Father Lord, as we mentioned that country, and I mentioned the country of Nigeria, Northern Nigeria, Father, we just use these countries as representations, O oh God, of anywhere in the world where your children are suffering for the name of Jesus because they call themselves G G Christians. Father Almighty God, God, we ask that you reach into there where they are right now, oh God, with your love. Let it be so real to them, oh God. Hold them, oh God. Strengthen their faith, oh God. Father Christ, you are in them the hope of glory. Father, let their hope in you be renewed even in spite of, oh God. Father, despite the death strength, despite the persecution, despite the abuse, oh God, may their faith even be strengthened even more in you, almighty God. Father, Lord, even though they have been pressed, they have been shaken, Father, Lord, they would not be pressed down, oh God. Father, their inner self will be renewed day by day in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, this affliction will not kill their spirits in the mighty name of Jesus. But Father, Lord, to the, to the glory of your name, in persecution in this nations with even further the, the gospel of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, may their faith, may their faith in you, may their strength in you, may their hope in you, Father, Lord, even convince their persecutors to turn to you, O oh God. Father, Lord, let there be revival everywhere there's persecution. We know from the Bible, Lord, that revival even spreads more. Father, Lord, in these countries where people are being killed for your name, for your name's sake, Father, Lord, Lord, let revival come, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, oh Lord, we thank you. We worship you, almighty God. Father, we declare in the mighty name of Jesus that nothing, nothing shall separate our brothers and sisters from your love, oh God. Father, thank you because you hold them with your everlasting arms, oh God. Father, because you comfort them, we are so grateful, oh God. Father, Lord, they will see heaven before they see death. We declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, no tribulation, no distress, no persecution. Father, Lord, will we'll keep them from you in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare they are more than conquerors in the mighty name of Jesus because you love them, oh God. Father, Lord, we worship you. We give you praise, oh God. You are their light. Be their light, be their salvation. Be the fourth man in their fire, oh God. Come alive for them, come true for them, be real to them every single moment, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Father, you love this one so much, more than we can ever do. And Lord, we trust them into your hands, oh God. And Father, Lord, we just should there be anyone amongst us who is being persecuted even amongst us here maybe because you have turned to Christ out of your family and you're the only person and you've been cast out you've been ostracized in the mighty name of Jesus we just I just pray for that person and I say that that love of Christ you will know it completely it will keep you in the mighty name of Jesus and you will stand strong in your faith in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, almighty God. We give you praise, oh God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Thank you, church. And I just want to encourage every one of us to keep on praying for our brothers and sisters. When your little toe is hurting, you know it. You know it. Keep this going on. This is not a five-minute prayer on a Sunday. Keep it going on every day. Thank you. God bless. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, um, please be seated. Please be seated. We're really grateful to JJ and Jemia and Tola for those prayers. And we honestly say a very loud amen. A really loud amen. And we're grateful to God for that. Ladies and gentlemen, last year we had what was an absolutely remarkable men's conference, um, the Mandate Men's Conference. It was a full day's package. The theme was change. And one of the things we realized was we as guys 
absolutely needed it. We needed that opportunity both to learn, to spend time together, to learn from one another, to have a variety of conversations. It was absolutely amazing. And so coming up this Saturday, and it's when we say we want to keep the momentum going, this is quite a remarkable year, without a doubt. And we want to keep that momentum going. And so this Saturday, Saturday morning, and we're having our Mandate Men's Breakfast. Now, when we say our Mandate Men's Breakfast, let me see if I can bring you in, in a few moments, what the benefits of a gathering of guys like that is. Now, there are some perks with it. One, yes, we are at the Millennium Gloucester Hotel. That's going to be absolutely amazing. There is always, we do breakfast together, so eating together is great. But what you also realize, for three and a half hours, or a little bit more, we have the opportunity to ask questions, have conversations, notice people, have be encouraged that you're not the only one going through what you're going through. And being a guy is an onerous responsibility. We have the opportunity of simply being together, spending time in worship, spending time in prayer. And then on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, and I do say ladies and gentlemen, on top of that, we have what is, we have a speaker, Lord Dr. Michael Hastings. And I pause there for a very simple reason, because he has a very unique gift. He has the ability to distill truth, some of the most difficult truths. And he has the ability to pass it across to people of all ages in ways so that by the time he finishes speaking, and this is one of the graces he carries, is that something he says something the Lord says through his gift, his preparation, which is vast and phenomenal, through his experience, always settles in your heart and it never leaves you the same. And so, gentlemen, if you haven't got your tickets, the, we, the tickets are um, on sale already. You can get them through our Smurly site. We encourage you to get them. Thank you to all the ladies who have sewn tickets to for men to actually go for those that can't afford it and so if you do want to go and you can't afford it let us know and I want to say this as I bring this to a close and I really encourage you gentlemen opportunities will be going coming towards you and going past you all the days of your life and I heard this from one such gentleman it is this until you get in front of one of those opportunities, they do not become a part of your history. And this weekend is one of those opportunities. And I would encourage you to grab a ticket. If you can't afford it, let us know because we've had a wonderful outpouring of generosity from ladies and men to provide tickets so if you're relatively younger and you can't afford it let us know so we can still make sure you're there we want everybody to be there every gentleman to be there but let me stop with this one of the most interesting facts you'll find out about the bible is this every time jesus said according to your faith let it be so he said that eight times every single time what happened was never on his daily schedule somebody got in his way and said I need your help gentlemen this is an opportunity just like that and so we encourage you to grab tickets if you haven't got a ticket Gentlemen, grab one. If you know somebody who should be there, encourage them to get a ticket. Get them a ticket if you can. But gentlemen, it's going to be an amazing Saturday. We'll see you on Saturday morning, and it will be life-changing. Most of all, God will be kind to you. Well, hi, church. Happy New Year again. Um, eight days already gone uh, in the month of January. Um, and that tells you how quickly we have to position ourselves 
Like we have said, God is definitely doing a realignment this year. And it's a realignment to position us uh, and to establish us for what God will do in our lives. Um, today, we have with us uh, someone whose ministry and the ministry of his spiritual father uh, has touched millions, literally hundreds of millions all over the world. Um, I've always wanted to have him uh, here at Jesus' house. We were privileged almost 20 years ago to have his uh, spiritual father who's going to be with the Lord, the great evangelist Reinhard Bonke here at Jesus' house. And we believe that was pivotal for us uh, in the way that uh, it positioned the church. And so, you know, we're grateful uh, to have him with us. He's a pastor, he's a teacher, he's an evangelist, he's an author. Uh, but what I admire most about him is the passion he has for people to come to know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has led tens of millions to Christ all around the world. Their ministry, Christ for All Nations, is very dear to those of us who are of an African heritage because uh, Reinhard Bonnke committed himself to bring in millions, tens of millions, and probably more, uh, to the Lord uh, in Africa. Um, and we're so grateful to have him with us here on the 8th of January, the start of the year. I believe that it's pivotal. It will position us as we realign ourselves with God's heart. And God's heart primarily for those who don't yet know his son, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. And so, Jesus House, will you welcome with me, give him a Jesus House welcome as he comes to share his heart. I believe he will leave a deposit here in Jesus House that will set our hearts on fire for those who don't yet know Jesus. And I believe it's a precursor to a harvest of souls, not just into this church, but into the body of Christ. Will you rise with me and make welcome uh, evangelist pastor Daniel Colenda. I pray, Lord, that you may heal broken marriages, that you may heal broken families in the name of Jesus. Jesus is the answer for this nation. Jesus is the answer for Africa. Say amen. Oh, hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. But I come to you in the name above every name. The name that is higher than every power, it is the name of Jesus Christ.
Come on, you can do better than that. Jesus, we love you. We worship you. We give you the praise and the glory that's due to your name. Hallelujah. Are you happy this morning? Praise God. You can be seated. What a pleasure it is to be here at Jesus' house. I've heard so many great things about this church. Um, I believe one of the greatest churches in the United Kingdom and I believe God has strategically positioned you to impact this nation for the gospel. Amen? Does anybody believe that? Okay, listen, I'm used to preaching in Africa, so you guys are going to have to talk back to me, or I'm going to think I'm doing something wrong, okay? Um, I want to thank Pastor Agu for the invitation to be here. Um, what a great man of God and, uh, and a man that I consider a new friend. Uh, I hope that I'm able to come back many times and to become a part of the family here. I always say the first time I preach somewhere, I'm a guest. From now on, I'm family, okay? Um, one of the things in Pastor Agu's heart, as I'm sure you realize, for this coming year, is that there would be a spiritual realignment taking place, not only in this church, but I believe in the church, generally. And I... I resonate with that desire in his heart to see that I believe that God is realigning us as a global church family not just because it's a good idea but because we desperately need to be positioned for the days that are ahead we are not living in times like maybe we are used to in the past the days that we are entering into now are critical and significant. These are the last days. These are the end times. And the days for playing games, the days for playing church are long past. And I believe that there are things that God has allowed in the past. He's winked at them. We read about that in the book of Acts that in former times God winked at these things. Not anymore. Now the severity of the times changes. And there are things we used to get away with we're not going to get away with anymore. There are things that used to be tolerated that aren't going to be tolerated anymore. It is time to get serious. And one of, the, one of the things that we have to get serious about is the lost. Let me tell you something. You are the answer for this nation. Let me say that again because some of you will let that go in one ear and out the other. You are the answer for this nation. Maybe you're waiting for some big evangelist to come through with a gospel crusade and save the United Kingdom so that you can just get on with life as usual. That's not how it works. God is going to use you. And he's going to use his body. He's going to use every individual one. And so I believe that one of the things that, that I'm praying will happen even this morning in this church is that there will be an impartation for a burden to see this city one for Jesus. And it begins with us. Amen? And, and I believe that this happens not only through what I'm going to say, because the words are important. But how many of you know that beyond the words themselves, there is a spirit that can be imparted to you? And that's what I'm praying is that there would be a burden imparted to you from the Holy Ghost this morning. That you will not be able to go back to life as usual from this day forward in Jesus' name. Just take your hand and put it on your heart. And say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, speak to my heart. Change my life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Matthew. We're going to chapter number 10. Matthew chapter number 10. I've only got a few minutes to preach this morning. And I'm going to do this quickly, but I believe that every word is significant. And so I pray that God will give you a supernatural attention span. Amen. Matthew chapter 10, and I'm going to read verses 7 and 8. This is Jesus speaking. Many of your Bibles have these words actually written in red. How many of you know when Jesus talks, we ought to listen? This is not just another man talking, not just another preacher, not just another opinion. 
This is God in the flesh. And he's speaking to his disciples, and this is what he tells them. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, now freely give. Let me read it for you one more time. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, now freely give. Now listen, I want to I wanna get you involved in this, okay? So we're going to say this together. And we're going to do it phrase by phrase because every phrase of this is a command that we are to live out. You know, I talked to one pastor who, who had a very large church and a very sophisticated church in, in the United States. And he told me, he said, you know, we are very careful about our mission statement. A lot of churches have mission statements. And he said, what, what we did for this mission statement is we gathered our staff together and we, we took about a hundred of them on a retreat to a, a, a camp in the mountains. And we spent a week there together fasting and praying about our mission statement. And he said, we spent several days agonizing over every word. It was only about one paragraph long. But every sentence of that paragraph, we, we discussed and we analyzed and we debated. And then when we had formulated the perfect mission statement for our church, then we took the rest of the time and we just prayed that God would bless that mission statement. And I thought, now that sounds very spiritual. That sounds very noble. But I actually know a better way. Instead of, instead of coming up with a very clever mission statement and asking God to bless it, there's actually a much more efficient way to go about this. Just go ahead and find out what mission statement God is already blessing, adopt that mission statement, and then you can go to dinner. You, can, you don't even have to pray. It's blessed already because Jesus spoke it. You know, there's a lot of people, especially in the new year, this is a time everybody likes to fast. You know, how many of you know that the new year resolution time, people are fasting, people are praying for their new year. If you're going to fast and disobey, you might as well go ahead and eat. You'd be much better off to obey and have lunch than to fast for 40 days and not do what God has told you to do. Come on, I'm speaking to somebody here this morning. The power is found in obedience and faith. Witch doctors fast for power. That's not how we operate. Our power has three sources. The cross, the upper room, and the empty tomb. Let me say it again. The cross, the upper room, and the empty tomb. And we access that power through faith and obedience. And so may God give us the grace to adopt this into our lives. Let's say it together. Say, as you go, as you go. preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received. Freely give. Now remember when Jesus said this, he was looking in the eyes of his disciples. And he was pointing at them. So this is what I want you to do. We're going to do it again, but I want you to look at the person next to you. And I want you to point your finger at them. And I want you to say it to them as a command. Say, as you go, as you go preach. preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received. Now freely give. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? If we would just obey that verse, if we could adopt that, I mean not just as a, a mission statement that we put on a plaque and hang on the wall, but if we made that the objective and the mission and the commission of our lives, you would change this nation. There were 120 people in the upper room that were filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And those 120, in obedience to this command, turned into millions and billions around the world. Imagine what God could do with the group right here in this room. I know many of you have emigrated to this nation from other countries. I do not believe that is a mistake. I believe you have been sent here as a missionary to the United Kingdom. 
Maybe you thought you came here because of education or you came here for a job or you came here for some other kind of opportunity. Oh no, my friend, you've been tricked by God. He brought you here as a representative of heaven. Your mission, your calling is to impact this nation with the power of the gospel. Do you believe that? If you don't now, you will before the morning's over here. Let me just talk about this passage a little bit. Jesus says, as you go, everybody say, as you go, put the emphasis on you, as you go. You see, we have, we have done something terrible in the church. Can I come down here? Am I going to be okay? We, we, we're allowed to do that in this church? Okay. I don't want to come out of the light. I know sometimes that's a problem for the cameramen. We have done this terrible thing in the church where we have segregated the body of Christ into two distinct categories. We call them the clergy and what? The laity. You know what that means, right? The clergy, these are the professional full-time preachers. They are the ministers. They are the pastors. They are the preachers. And then the rest of the body of Christ we call the laity. That does not exist in the Bible. That is not a biblical model. That is an invention of, of human wisdom. Actually, let me, let me even go a step further. That is a demonic assassination on the biblical mission of the church because this is how the, the the book of Ephesians 4 describes what we would consider the clergy the, the apostle prophet pastor teacher evangelist it says that their job is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry in other words if you compare the body of Christ to a football team the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, we are like the water boys. Somebody thinks we're the captains. Oh no, there's one captain, his name is Jesus. There's not a bunch of different captains in the body of Christ. There's one captain, there's one head, there's one leader. He is Jesus Christ, that's the one we follow. Our job as as the five-fold ministry gifts is to serve. Jesus said, let the greatest among you be the servant of all. And he modeled that by getting down on his hands and knees and washing the feet of his disciples. I tell you what, if you, if you follow a leader that won't wash your feet, run. Because you are not called to serve another man. You are called to serve Jesus. And we work together as brothers and sisters. But what has happened is the enemy has convinced half of the, well, no, I shouldn't even say that. The enemy has convinced 98% of the body of Christ that their job is to sit in chairs as observers and applaud and say amen and give money while 2% of the body of Christ does all the work. That is not the biblical model. The biblical model is that 2% equips the 98% to go out and win their world for Jesus. If you don't win the United Kingdom, nobody will. I promise you the preachers are not going to do it. I promise you the great evangelists are not going to do it. I promise you some big crusade is not going to do it. It's going to require every man, woman, boy, and girl filled with the power of the Holy Spirit impacting their world for Jesus wherever they go. You know, where we live in Orlando... There is a, there is a, we have a church there now, and there's a community of evangelists. Everywhere you go in, in Orlando, you're going to get preached to. I went to the mall the other day, and five or six times I saw people from our church in the mall praying for someone. Just one, walking from one side of the shopping mall to the other side of the shopping mall. Five or six times I saw members of our church there with people praying with them to receive Jesus. I tell you, we can turn this city into a sanctuary hallelujah we can impact this city for jesus but it's going to take somebody being willing to obey what the bible says now here's here's the problem if i can be very honest that most people don't do this i think most of you if you are saved you want to reach the lost if you don't want to reach the lost then i would say you might be lost yourself Because if you are saved, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. 
And if you, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ is inside of you, you are going to desire what God desires. And number one on God's wish list is that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. But here's the problem is people feel insecure. They feel unqualified. They feel unworthy. They don't feel equipped. They don't know how to do what they know they need to do. And number one, we feel self-conscious. Let's just be honest. How many of you feel a little bit self-conscious sometimes? Okay, so there's a few honest people, and the rest of you are liars. Listen, I, I have preached to, I don't know, 30 million people. I still feel self-conscious. Everyone feels these emotions sometimes. We read about these stories in the Bible. You read the story of Gideon hiding in a wine cellar. This is one of the greatest judges, one of the greatest deliverers. In the beginning of his, his career, he was hiding for his life because he was such a coward. And then when the Lord appears to him, the Lord calls him a mighty man of fearless courage. It's because God doesn't see you the way that you see yourself. God sees you through a different lens. He sees you through the lens of what he created you to be. When he was fashioning you and forming you in your mother's womb, he had a dream for your life. And whenever he looks at you, he sees not what you are, but what you could be. And he always calls to that potential, like he called Lazarus out of the grave. Come forth is what he's saying to you every moment of every day. You know, one of the great challenges that we have in the church, unfortunately, is that many times there is a competitive spirit. People actually don't like to see anyone else succeeding around them. I don't know if you've ever seen this. I know Christians shouldn't be this way, but it very often is the case that when God really begins to bless you, if you step out of that, of that, um, you know, that box of of what is normal Christianity into something extraordinary. If you begin to share the gospel, if you begin to see, you know, things happening, you will find persecution even from some of your friends and family members. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, I was shopping for um, years ago. I, I, I saw, um, I went to a friend's house and he had this very beautiful aquarium with beautiful tropical fish. And I was intrigued. I'd never seen anything like this before. So I started to do some research. I thought, I want one of these beautiful aquariums in my house. So I, I shopped around and, and I found out there are all kinds of aquariums that you can buy. There's aquariums for freshwater fish and aquariums for saltwater fish. And there are aquariums for uh, jellyfish and seahorses and corals and all kinds of different sea creatures. But the one that interested me the most was the aquarium for crabs. You all know crabs, right? The, is that what you call them here? With these, with these pinchers on each side, these claws. We like to eat them in Florida, where I'm from. But the, the crabs, I noticed that the, the crab aquariums had no lids on the top. And, and, and this, at first, it intrigued me because I thought, well, won't the crabs climb out of the aquarium and escape? And the pet shop owner said to me, oh no, you don't have to worry. I said, why not? He said, if one crab tries to climb out, the other crabs will reach up and pull him back down again. And I thought to myself, you know, that sounds like a lot of Christians I know. The church is filled with crabby Christians. We don't like to see people success, succeed where we have failed. We don't like to see people being elevated above our position. We don't like to see God lifting somebody out of the aquarium of church life as usual. But I have good news for you, my friend. God doesn't see you the way that your brother sees you, your sister sees you, your cousin sees you, your, your friend, your neighbor, your mama, your daddy, your grandma, your grandpa. He sees you in a way that you don't even see yourself. He sees the potential that is inside of you and he calls to it. And if you will respond to that call with simple obedience, you will discover incredible grace and power that is there. And that's why it says, as you go, everybody say, go. 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 It's because if you want to see the power of God in action that is inside of you, you're going to have to do something. 
You say, well, Daniel, I, I know you, you're saying that there's all of this potential inside of me, but I don't see it. I've never seen somebody come to the Lord. I've never witnessed a miracle. I've never seen God use me in that way. How do you know that I have that potential? Well, imagine, you know, I don't know, I don't keep up with uh, sports in the UK too much, but, but like, who is the greatest footballer in, in the UK? Ronaldo? Okay. I think we're going to start a fight here. I better be careful. Let's say whoever you think it is, okay? The, whoever you think is the greatest footballer in this country, let's say you have them over to your house for tea. And they sit there at your breakfast table. You're having a lovely conversation. They're drinking their tea. Can you see the potential and the power and the talent that is in their life while they sit there at your kitchen table? Yes or no? no? Of course not. But if you take them down to the football stadium and you throw the football in onto the field and the teams begin to play, then you will begin to see the power and the skill and the talent that is inside that person. Let me tell you, let me tell you why most Christians never realize the potential that God has put inside of them. It's because they spend their whole lives sitting in the pews at church watching people do what they wish that they could do. But that is not your calling. You have not been called to sit. There was never a commission, a calling, an anointing, a gifting given in Scripture for sitters. God doesn't sit with sitters. He goes with goers. He works with workers. He uses those who obey and who go. That's why he said, as you go, you've got to go. You've got to go. Let me see. Let's say that again. I'm putting the emphasis on two different words. You've got to go. And you've got to go. If you miss either one of those things, you're going to miss it. It's not about waiting for somebody else to do the work. It's about you doing the work. Turn to your neighbor and say, you've got to do this. But you've also got to do this. It means stepping out of your comfort zone. You know, I think a lot of the churches in the United Kingdom practice what I call spider web evangelism. You know how a spider operates, right? Let me take my jacket off. It's getting a little warm. A spider, a spider is an, an ambush predator. What it does is it, it builds a, a web in, in an ideal location. Maybe it's in a corner where it knows that there's a lot of traffic of other insects. So he builds this perfect web and he puts all the silky strands in their place. And when it's just the way he likes it, the spider climbs into the web and sits and waits and waits and waits and waits and waits. And waits very patient. And you know what he's waiting for? He's waiting for some poor unsuspecting bug to come along and get stuck in the web and then the spider pounces and sucks all the life out. This is how most churches in, in the UK operate. The pastor, or some, some great man of God, he, he finds a few of the Christians that all have the same heart and they look around town for the most perfect corner between two very busy streets. And they, they spend time and money and energy building a beautiful building. And, and I tell you what, they put so much effort into it. Everything has to be just right. Just the right color of carpet. Just the right paint on the walls. The lights have to be beautiful. The, the, the temperature in the room has to be just right. They spend so much time and effort and energy perfecting that space. And when it's just the way the pastor likes it, or maybe I should say more accurately, when it's just the way the pastor's wife likes it, <laughs> then all the people of God come inside that building like a spider in the web, and they sit, and they wait, and wait, and wait, and wait, and wait. Do you know what they're waiting for? They're waiting for some poor, unsuspecting sinner to come along and find themselves unwittingly in the midst of the church. And when that happens, then the pastor will pounce and all the people will shout, get him, pastor, get him, get him. 
And maybe once or twice a decade, somebody gets saved in our church. And the people feel very happy about that. My friend, listen, Jesus did not say, I will make you spider web evangelists. He said, I will make you what? Fishers of men. Do you know how a fisherman operates? I can tell you it's precisely the opposite of the way a spider operates. A fisherman does not sit on the shore and wait for the fish to jump into his boat. A fisherman leaves the comfort of the shore. He gets into a ship. He pushes away from the dock out into the deep. He throws his net into the water and pulls those fish out of their world into his world. And a miracle happens in the kingdom of God. When the fish are caught, then the fish become the fishermen. Can I tell you how to have a soul winning church? Win souls and then those new converts become your very best evangelists. A lot of people, many of you looking at me like, like, I don't know if you have this expression here, but a deer in the headlights. Where I live, there's lots of deers and when a car comes down the road at night and the deer sees the headlights, they don't know which way to go, so they freeze. And you see the look in their eyes. Do I go right? Do I go left? You go forward in Jesus' name. This is not a time to hesitate. It's not a time to halt. It's not a time to wait. Evangelist Reiner Bonk used to always say, if you want to catch fish, don't throw your net in the bathtub. The reason that a lot of people aren't catching fish, the reason a lot of churches aren't seeing the lost saved is because the only place they throw out the net is in the church building. The four walls of the churches are the most evangelized real estate in all of the United Kingdom. If you're going to want to win this nation, you're going to have to go outside of these walls into the highways, into the byways, and compel them to come. Amen. Our preaching of the gospel has to go beyond the four walls of the church. Can you say amen? amen? My time is almost gone. As you go, preach. You see, it's not just you. It's not just going. You also got to preach. What does it mean to preach? It means to proclaim. It means to declare. If, if you want to understand, some, some of you are saying, I can't do this because I don't have a theological degree. I can't do this because I've never been trained in a, in a seminary how to preach. Maybe you even feel like you don't know how to tell people adequately about Jesus. What if they have an objection? What if they start to argue with you? How will you respond? Can I tell you something, my friend? I'm going to simplify this for you. You know, we could have a, we could have a week long seminar about how to evangelize and how to go out in the streets. I'm going to help you. Can I do that for you? If you'll open your heart right now in the eight minutes that I have left, I will set you free from this. Actually, the Holy Spirit will set you free, but your mind will open. How many of you know the truth sets us free? Many times the bondages that we are under are bondages that take place between the ears. There's actually no chains on you. There's no restrictions on you. All your limitations are in your own mind. There's, a, there's a, a word, actually there's two words in the New Testament that are used for preaching. They are the words kerygma and caruso. The word caruso is the word for a loud public declaration. And, and a good example of this is that, you know, in, the, in, in ancient times, they did not have news outlets. They didn't have NBC and ABC and BBC. They didn't have Facebook and and Instagram, that's not how people got their news. They didn't even have newspapers back then. What they had was people who were proclaimers. And so let's say that there were two nations at war and, and the battle had been won out on the battlefield, but now the people back in town had to know who the ruler was, who the victor was. So what would happen is that the, the, the victorious king would send a person through the villages and the cities to proclaim the news that they had overcome, that they had victory over their enemies, that they had been, uh, that they had been liberated. Whatever the news was, the, the proclaimer would go in to make that announcement. And he would do it with a loud public cry. That is the word Caruso. It is that public cry of victory in battle, of the announcement of a king ascending to his throne. That's what the word Caruso means. And so Jesus takes this word and he talks about preaching the gospel go into all the world and proclaim the gospel what he's not talking about is making some big drawn out theological presentation 
He's not talking about debating. He's talking about proclaiming the simple truth of the gospel. There's a great story that I, that, uh, that I love to use to illustrate this word. In America, we have this uh, celebration that happens in June every, every year. It's called Juneteenth. And um, you probably haven't heard about this. Even a lot of Americans don't know about this. But it's, it's the celebration of Texas releasing the slaves after the Civil War in America. And you might wonder, why was that significant? Well, the Civil War had been fought, and the Emancipation Proclamation granted freedom to all of the slaves. But for two years, the state of Texas continued to keep those people under slavery. But it was illegal. They had no right to keep those slaves, but they did it anyway in defiance of the federal government. So two years later, the president sent a general named Gordon Granger with 2,000 armed soldiers into Galveston, Texas. And he stood up on the Ashton Villa and he read out General Order Number 3 demanding that every slaveholder release the slaves. And the proclamation said, all of these slaves are free citizens of the United States. It is illegal to keep them captive any longer. And if you do so, we will liberate them by force if necessary. And that was the end of slavery in the United States. Now listen to me, my friends. Our job as Christians, when Jesus says to go and preach the gospel, that proclamation is a proclamation of liberation to all of those who are slaves to sin and slaves to the power of the devil. And you don't have to be a great theologian. You don't have to be a great preacher. You just got to announce the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. One of the reasons people have so many problems evangelizing is if they try to go in and explain something to somebody. I've never found that to be effective. Here's what is effective. My brother, my sister, Jesus Christ is the answer for the problem that you're facing right now. He can set you free from drugs. He can set you free from sin. He can break the power of that addiction in your life. Jesus Christ can give you peace. That is the answer. And then you begin to pray. You see, when Gordon Granger arrived there in Galveston, Texas, he did not come alone. He came with 2,000 armed soldiers with him. Do you know why? Because he had to be ready to enforce that word with power if necessary. And that's why Jesus says, as you go, preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. But don't stop there. Heal the sick. What is that? That's power. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Hallelujah. What is your job? Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever occupation you have, whatever ministry you're in, I can tell you one thing. Your job as a Christian is to what? Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. You say, Daniel, I, I don't know how to do that. Oh, it's so easy. You know, I've seen amazing miracles. If I had time this morning, I could tell you story after story after story of the miracles that I've seen. I've seen blind eyes open. I've seen the deaf ears open. I've seen cripples walk. I've seen missing limbs, body parts grow out. I've seen dead people come back to life again. And people ask me all the time, you know, I've been interviewed on television programs. I've been asked by different people to, to, to give testimonies for the books that they're writing. People want to know, how do you do this? And my testimony to them is always the same. Actually, miracles are the easiest part of my job. Do you know why? Because I don't do them. I've never performed a single miracle. I've seen thousands, but I've never performed one. Jesus performed every single one of them. My little tiny part was just to pray, just to give him a chance to work. I want you all to stand. Worship team, would you come? I remember one time I was working in, my, in the yard at my house, and my daughter was about four years old at the time. Just a sweet little girl with big eyes, so, such, a, such a daddy's girl. And I was, I was working in the yard. There was this big plank. It was about 30 feet long. I don't know what that is in meters. What is that, like three, 10, 10 meters? 10 meters long, 
300 pounds. What's that in kilograms? What, it's heavy. It's very heavy, okay? 300. What is it? 150 kilograms. Heavy even for a big guy. And so I had, to, I had to pull this log, this beam, from one side of the yard to the other side of the yard. And so I hoisted one side up under my arm, and I was dragging it with all of my might across the yard. And my four-year-old daughter looked through the window and saw me. She had a teddy bear tucked under one of her arms. She was still in her pajamas. And she saw me out there working, and she opened the door, and she ran out. She said, Daddy, 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 let me help you. And I said, well, sweetheart, just go and push that other side. And so you can imagine this little four-year-old girl, her hair in pigtails, you know, on each side, a teddy bear under one arm in her pajamas. With one hand, she's pushing like this. And when we got to the other end of the yard, I put the beam down, and I wrapped my arms around her. I got down on my knee. I said, sweetheart, thank you so much for helping Daddy. You're such a big girl. And her... She was just smiling and her eyes were beaming. She couldn't wait to run back inside and tell her mom about how helpful she had been. But you and I both know the truth, don't we? She wasn't that helpful. In fact, she might have even made the job more difficult because I didn't want to hurt her. So why did I involve her in my project? Because I love her. And it brings joy to my heart that she finds joy in me. My friend, listen, this is what Jesus says. After all of this, he says, as you go, preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Then he adds this statement. Freely you have received. Freely give. What is he saying? He's saying that at the end of the day, you didn't earn any of this. Your offering of the gospel and the power of the gospel even if it's the most extraordinary exploit something like raising the dead actually you're just giving away what you freely received anyways it's easy god doesn't use us because he needs us there's nothing we bring to the table that impresses him like my four-year-old daughter he doesn't involve us because he needs our help. He's already doing the heavy lifting. When you preach the gospel, the Holy Spirit partners with you. It says in Mark chapter 16, verse 20, that as they went out, they preached everywhere, and God was working with them, confirming the word with signs following. You see, here is the beautiful truth that when you obey what I've just preached, and you go, I challenge you to try this this week, just determining your heart, say, I'm going to talk to one person every day about Jesus. And you're going to make an amazing discovery. If you will step out in faith, God will work with you. And he will do what you thought was impossible. And you will find yourself being used by him in extraordinary ways. I want to just give you a chance to respond to this this morning. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do a big altar call because this is between you and the Lord. But here's what I want for us to do. How many of you would say, I want God to give me a heart for the lost? Let me see your hand. Now don't raise your hand lightly because heaven is looking at this. And I don't know if you realize what it means to have a heart for the lost, but it's serious. If you really desire this, I want you to take your hand and put it on your heart. And I want you to pray this with me. Say, Jesus, help me to love what you love. Break my heart with what breaks yours. Help me, Jesus, to obey your command. To go, to preach, to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers to raise the dead, to cast out devils, to freely give what I have received. I say yes to you, Lord Jesus. Take my life. Use me for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
with in Evangelist Daniel. Father, thank you for the word today. Um, I'm not sure about you, but I've been challenged listening to that word today. Um, you know, it says that we ought to go out and proclaim the message to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and drive out demons. Well, church, it's time for us to worship. Can I ask that you sit down, please? Please take your seats. Thank you. It's blessing time. It's time for us to worship God with our offerings and our tithes. The scripture tells us that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And I'd like to share a scripture in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 20, verses 35, reading from the Passion Translation. And I read, I left you with an example of how you should serve and take care of those who are weak. For we must always cherish the words of our Lord Jesus who taught. Giving brings a far greater blessing than receiving. You know, part of our giving goes out to helping the poor, to helping those who are less privileged and the weak. And the Bible tells us that when we give, that we set ourselves up for this far great blessing. So if you're worshiping with us for the first time, we encourage you to be part of this far greater blessing. The ways of giving will be displayed on the screen. And if you have access to a chat box, our wonderful host would have dropped in a link for you. Please click on the link and follow the instructions to give. I also want to remind us as well that as we give, you know, the purpose of God's, the purpose for God for us to give is not just to raise money, but is to raise men and women to be like him. Why do I say so? The Bible tells us that for God so loved the world, he gave. So we ought to be like our father in giving. If you are here in the auditorium and you would like to give um, with cash, please use the offering envelopes in the seat pockets in front of you. And the ushers will be more than happy to take the envelopes from you once you're done. As it is our custom here in Jesus' house, anytime a minister or guest minister comes to share the word or to bless us with the word, what we do is that we will sow into the minister's um, ministry. And so we've been blessed today by the word that we've heard from, ev from Evangelist Daniel. Have you been blessed today? Have you been blessed today? Well, I encourage you to be a blessing. Partake of this far great blessing. Sow into his ministry. Again, to do that, the... Um, the offerings to use are in the seat pockets in front of you. It's the envelope labeled, blessed to be a blessing. And again, once, you've, once you're done, the um, ushers will take the offering envelopes from you. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word that we've heard today. May the word truly change us. And Father, we ask that you continue to bless the servant of God. Bless your son, strengthen him, replenish him in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask for an attitude to give. May it become a lifestyle for us to give, to give to the poor, to give to the weak, but also to give ourselves in serving you. Father, we ask that our offerings and tithes today will be acceptable in your sight in the name of Jesus. And Father, we remember those that are faced with difficulties, financial difficulties, those in between jobs, in between contracts. We ask, Lord, that you meet them at their point of need in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being such a loving God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for lavishing your love upon us, Almighty Father. And today, may your word change us for good. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you as you give. Hallelujah. We say, be great God, hallelujah, who deserves all our worship. We give you praise, Father. We give you glory and all the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We will sing Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will sing Hallelujah. Cause every knee will bow down, every tongue confess and sing hallelujah. Cause every knee will bow down, every tongue confess and sing hallelujah. Everybody raise your voice and say We will sing Hallelujah Say Hallelujah Say Hallelujah We will sing Just lift your hands and say, Hallelujah. 
Cause every knee will bow and every tongue confess. Cause every knee will bow and every tongue confess. I said, every knee will bow and every tongue confess. Help me sing. Cause every And every time confess, every knee will bow, and every time, every knee will bow down, Lord. Every knee, and every time confess, say, every knee, and every time, and say. Hallelujah. Please sit back for seven years. God bless you. My name is Joy and I will be bringing you the first seven news of 2023. So first up, please remember that we have our Mandate Men's Breakfast on Saturday. 
Now it's not too late, gents. You can register and join us. We want to see as many of you there as possible. Our guest speaker is Lord Michael Hastings and he'll be speaking to you men about true maturity. And I'm sure you'll agree that after the amazing men's conference, I was also there, where the focus was on change, God is calling all men to mature and evolve into the men that he created you to be. The venue is the Millennium Gloucester Hotel. As I said, it's on Saturday, 8.30 a.m., 45 pounds as a standard and 35 pounds for partners. So please do go onto our Smurly link to purchase your tickets. That link is smur.ly forward slash Jesus House UK. And if you want any more updates on the Mandate Men's Conference, then simply find them online at the Mandate Men or visit the Mandate website. The Open Doors World Watch List 2023 will be launched in Parliament on Wednesday the 18th of January. Now, the World Watch List is Open Door's annual ranking of the countries where Christians literally risk everything to follow Christ. Now, for the first time ever, we are asking churches in London and beyond to gather for an in-person prayer event, just to pray for the impact of the parliamentary launch and to hear updates from the persecuted church directly. We'll hear from Lord Alton and a first-hand testimony from Timothy Cho, a Christian from North Korea. We'd love for you to join us and to help fill Westminster Chapel with the people that we need to boldly pray for change and amplify the voices of our persecuted brothers and sisters. For those who cannot join us in person, the event will also be live streamed. So here are the details to keep in mind. It's Wednesday the 18th of January from 8 till 9, that's p.m. If you're coming in person, it's Westminster Chapel and you can actually sign up via our Smurly link as well. And so the link is smur.ly forward slash Jesus House UK. And we'd love to see you in person or even joining us online. Oh, for our couples, we want to let you know about Couples Weekend Away 2023. It's happening on the 26th to the 29th of May at the Doubletree Hilton Oxford Belfry. So this is an exciting weekend for couples, you and your spouse, with the ample opportunity to spend time together, relax, mingle with other couples and renew your marriage, strengthen it up. So the weekend away will mark a new beginning in your marriage journey, according to the Tight Knots team. So for each couple, the weekend is £650, that's the combined amount. You can make payments either in full or in instalments. Either way, all payments are due by the 30th of April. Early bird special pricing is £610 per couple, so do take advantage of that if you know right now that you want to go. And also, do note that there is a £200 non-refundable fee, which is due with your registration. Couples, don't delay. Sign up for Couples Weekend Away today. So here's a reminder of our regular meeting times. For our children, Kids First began today. So we are back for Kids First. For Ruck, we're gonna to return to hybrid services from the 22nd of January. And then for Bible study, we're going to return not this Monday, but next Monday. And then for Tuesday prayers, we do return this Tuesday. So for Connect Groups, the final update I have for you is that we are starting off again on the 18th of January. Now, all the information is on our Smurly site, smur.ly forward slash Jesus House UK, and you can join, participate, or engage with any of the events I have just mentioned. So if you happen to have missed either our first or second service on any Sunday, or you'd like to watch services again, you can definitely rewatch all of our services on YouTube and on the jesushouse.tv platform from 3 p.m. that very Sunday. You can also listen to all services and Bible study sessions on all mainstream audio media, including podcasts, Spotify, and iTunes. So remember that Jesus House is social. Our handles on social media are at Jesus House London and at Jesus House UK. So please do follow us and like our posts, stay up to date with what we're doing during the week. That is it for this week's Seven News. It has been a pleasure to bring you the first Seven News of 2023. We've got so many more cool updates for you throughout the course of the year. But until next time, stay blessed. Bye. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Having listened to the awesome word that God sent to us this morning, how many people are grateful in their heart? As in really, really grateful. As in really, really grateful. You know, it's, it was God speak. You know, I said to Evangelist Daniel um, when he finished that I sat there and felt like God was speaking to me. How many people feel like God spoke to them today? Now, can we rise up and give God glory? Can we do that? Can we do that? Because he spoke to us out of the kindness of his heart, out of his grace and mercy for us as a people. Go on, let's give God glory and say, thank you, Lord. We bless you. We thank you. We honor you. For this word, for the beginning of the year 2023, how many know that this year will be your best year yet? It will be your best year yet. Because God obviously loves you and I. If you're at home, wherever you are, just bless God, bless God. Father, we bless you, we honor you, we magnify your name. We're grateful for your love for us, oh God. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name, oh God. Glory be to your name. And how many people will say this prayer with me that this word that God has sent to you and I, it will not fall to the ground. It, it will accomplish everything that God intended for sending. Can you say that prayer? Say it for yourself, say it for the church, that the word that God has spoken to us today, it will not be in vain. It will bear fruit in your life, it will bear fruit in my life, it will be fair fruit in this nation, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Once more, let's just give God glory, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated in God's wonderful presence. We are absolutely, eternally grateful to God for the word, but also grateful to his servant, um, evangelist Daniel Colenda. Can we appreciate him? I know he's gone into the hospitality room. We can do better than that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and I'd like us to please appreciate the team that came with Evangelist Daniel, Rob, and the rest of the team. Can we please appreciate them? Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. You know, I, I thought I would say this. I, I was saying it to myself, but I thought I'd say it to as many as would. I'd encourage us to listen to this message again, please. You know, it's one of those messages that you need to keep listening to to get the input of it. Many of you write notes, I write notes. And one of the things that struck me was that sentence that the power is with obedience and faith. How many got that? It's with the obedience and the faith. And then I, I wrote this, that God doesn't sit with sitters. He goes with goers. I thought that was profound, but you know the one that hit me the most? Can anyone guess the one that hit me the most? Can anybody guess? It was the analogy of the spider web church. And I'm thinking, my God, you're all spiders. <laughs> well, we're all spiders. But I, I, it actually really chastised me, and I thought, you know, let's do what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has asked us to do. And then let's see his power manifest in the city. We've been praying for revival for years, ladies and gentlemen, for six, seven years. We've been praying every Sunday. Perhaps it's time for the manifestation of the word of God. Amen. 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 And wanted to commend some of uh, Evangelist Daniel's books to you. I saw this and instantly I thought I must read this. It's titled, Live Before You Die. Wake up to God's will for your life. Um, I, how many immediately sense that this must be a good book? And then there's one that says, Slain Dragons. I'd love to read that. And then wanted to commend um, one of the books of um, the great Reinhard Bonnke, Living a Life of Fire. That's quite a voluminous book, but um, there are lots of books out in the foyer you want to avail yourselves. And then um, I've been asked to mention that if you'd like to 
follow the, the CFAN ministry, um, the Daniel Kalenda ministry, you're welcome to go to the desk and sign up, and then you'll get a free book as well. But I say all this again to say, please listen to this message again, and let's trust that the Word of God will bear fruit in our lives. Amen? Amen. Uh, wanted to, before we bring the service to a close, acknowledge all those who are worshipping with us for the first time. If it's your very first time, apart from our guests from Florida, if it's your very first time um, here in Jesus' house, can you just wave at me? Can you wave at me if it's your first time? Okay, a few hands. Go on, church. Let's appreciate our new guests. Our new guests. God bless you. Thank you for coming to worship with us. Um, those of you that are watching online, you're worshiping online, if it's your first time, the host would have dropped uh, the question on the chat box. If you just want to respond and just uh, press on the continue button. Um, if it's your first time, we'd love to keep in touch with you and just walk this Christian walk with you. Uh, there's a QR code on the screen if you're here and you're able to capture that. It brings up a form to fill your details so we can keep in touch with you. Same applies to those worshiping online if you want to go on the QR code and um, just help us to keep in touch with you. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we're going to bring the service to a close and I'd like us to just rise up in prayer. Uh, pardon me for sounding like a, a broken box, but I really, really feel that we need to pray the word that God has spoken to us. I feel we need to pray it into being. The prayer that Evangelist Kalenda, when he was leading us in prayer, he said, Lord, break my heart with your heart. Break my heart with what breaks your heart. Can we pray that prayer together, ladies and gentlemen, that God will remove our heart and give us his heart. Go on, let's just pray together. Father, Lord, we present our hearts to you today. We're grateful for your word, O oh God, grateful for your word. We don't just want to be hearers, we want to be doers. We don't just want to be sitters, we want to be goers. We want to be vessels of your power, O oh God. So, Lord, give us the grace to obey you, the grace to walk according to your word. And Father, Lord God Almighty, we ask you with all of our hearts, please give us the burden of your heart. Watch, let your desire be our desire. What breaks your heart, let it break our heart everlasting, Father. This is our prayer, O oh God. Lord, I pray for every single one of your children that has listened to your word today, that going into 2023, our lives will not remain the same. Set us on fire for you, O oh God. Give us a burden for those who do not yet know you, O oh Lord God Almighty. And use us as your instruments to bring this nation back to you. Blessed be your holy name, in the mighty name of Jesus. And the Apostle Paul prays this prayer in Ephesians chapter 3. He says in verse 14, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit then christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him your roots will grow down into god's love and keep you strong and can somebody say amen to that amen let us share the grace together may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, as you go, can you say Happy New Year again to somebody? And you're saying it as a prophet. It will be your best year yet. Happy New Year.